I'm Bryce and this is a tutorial for WP Tutes Plus. Today we're going to be implementing a responsive light box into our WordPress site. We're going to be using the 2012 WordPress theme, but you can do this with any theme. And we're going to be using the Fancy Apps Fancy Box, which you can access by just going to fancyapps.com slash fancybox. And when we get there, the first thing we want to do is download the latest version of it. And after doing that, you just want to unzip it. And if we open up the Fancy Apps folder, we're going to see a few things, but all we really need is in the source folder. And we're looking at the jQuery.fancybox.css file and the JS file and these images. So if I open up my 2012 theme directory, we're going to go inside the ink folder and add a new one in there called Lightbox. And we're doing this just to keep our files organized and easy to maintain. So you just want to grab these images, the CSS file, and the minified version of Fancybox and throw it in here. But we don't want to keep it like this just because it's quite unorganized and there's no need for that. So we'll, op we'll create some folders with a CSS folder, a JS folder, and an images folder. And we'll just organize our files appropriately. But you can see by the structure um, of the original file where they're all in the same directory, which means the images sourced in the CSS file aren't going to be looking for it in the right direction, in the right location. So we just need to open up our jQuery.fancybox.css folder and change wherever it sources images to the appropriate location. And you can do this using search and replace, or you can just go through. There's only a few images we need to update. And that's all of them. So once we've done this, we actually need to include these files in our theme. So we're going to open up our functions.php file and just scroll to the bottom. And make sure you've done this within the opening PHP tag. So we don't if we see something like that, we don't want to do it afterwards. It needs to be before that. And now we're going to unqueue the scripts and styles for our light box. And we're going to do that by creating a function and make sure the first part is the namespace of your theme and in this case it's 2012 and we'll just do add lightbox so in here we just want to unqueue jQuery first and as it's included with WordPress we just need to do that to unqueue it and we also want to unqueue the fancybox script And make sure you do the correct source for it. So it's in the ink folder, under lightbox folder, in the JS folder. And you might want to just check the name of the file. And we'll grab that. And we just want to let it know that we want it to be dependent on jQuery loading. And we don't worry about the versions, but we do want it to load in the footer. Now, after we've done that, we also need to create a new file inside of the JS folder, which is where we're going to initialize the lightbox from. And I'll talk more about that soon, but for now we just want to create a folder, uh, file called lightbox.js. And we want to do the exact same that we just did for the fancy box script, but for lightbox. And it's also in the JS folder under lightbox.js. We want it to load after fancybox has been loaded. And we also want it to be in the footer. And the last bit we need to unqueue is actually the style for it. So we're going to do that in a similar way. Call that lightbox style. And that's inside of the CSS folder. And we'll check the name of that, which is jQuery.fancybox.css. And now we want to add this action 
to WP onQ scripts and we just want to give the name of our function now which is 2012 underscore add underscore lightbox but yet yeah, nothing's going to happen yet because we need to go back to our lightbox folder and open up the lightbox.js file where we're going to initialize the lightbox from and now we're just going to do it in a very simple way by creating a function for it and what we're basically doing now is saying that whenever a link has a fancy box class to it we want to initialize the fancy box and now if we go back to our site and create a post we'll just call it our first light box I'm going to upload some images and I've got a whole lot over here on the desktop so I'll just grab a few here and make sure when you insert the post that it's using the link URL and we'll insert a thumbnail size one there and we'll also insert for another image the medium size one but we also need to add that class to those links so if we go and look at the HTML you might be in the visual editor so just open up the HTML one and we just want to add on a class after the link of fancy box and we'll do that for this image too and we'll publish that post refresh our site and if we click on these images you'll see that they open up in this new fancy box but it could be a bit of a hassle uh, for you or your user to keep adding this class especially if they're not comfortable or you're not comfortable with HTML so we're going to get rid of this in lightbox.js and add in a different function that's going to automatically turn any of these sort of um, links to images they don't have to have a class so we're actually going to remove the class and we'll turn it into the lightbox so we'll just remove the fancy box class there and we'll update that so we're going to create a different function this time just don't make typos like me and what we're typing here is basically saying if a file in, is a JPEG that we're linking to and we'll also include PNGs JPEGs that are spelled a little differently and GIFs as well and you can just keep doing this for as many different sort of image file formats as you'd like now I'll just check my code it's always good to do after you've written something like this just very easy to make a small mistake and there's one <laughs> So then we're just saying to give fancy box to all of these sort of links. And we'll save that. And these ones you can see they don't have the class anymore. We'll add in another one just as we should. And we'll update that. And refresh. And now without the class, they're still going to open up in the light box. So that's a neat way to do it because once you've done this part, it really doesn't require anything else and it's just going to automatically give the light box to all these different links to images. But what if we wanted to make this into a gallery so we could just use our arrows, the arrows that will appear here, or just our arrows on our keyboard to change between images in our light box. We can do that by adding a rel attribute to the links. So I'm just going to add rel, our photos, and you want to make sure that's the same for all the images you want to be in this sort of lightbox gallery. And we'll do that. Update our file. And now 
you can see these little arrows appearing and we can actually navigate between the images in our light box. I'm now using my arrow keys to do so, but you can also use these little arrow icons. But again, this might be a little bit too much work to keep adding the rel attribute to each of these images and we might just want to do it automatically. So I'm just going to remove them again. Update the post and go back into the lightbox.js file. And we're just going to modify this line, get rid of fancy box. And this is basically saying with all these sort of links that are linking to images, um, not only are we, do we want fancy box to work for them, but we also want to add the attribute of rel and we'll just write gallery and we'll do fancy box and save. If we refresh here, you're going to see that in that gallery, even though we haven't added manually that rel attribute to each of those links, but there's more we can do with it. What about galleries that people just insert into their WordPress site automatically? What if we want to support those and turn those into a lightbox gallery automatically? Well, we can do that quite easily. Um, but the first thing we need to do is add some more images. So we have a nice size gallery. So I'm just going to throw these all in. And we should have 12 images now, which is a nice amount. And when we insert the gallery, we want to insert it using image file, not attachment page. And we'll do four to a columns. And then we have a gallery, but it's already working because we've added this bit of code. So it's really handy like that. But again, this is doing it for all the links on the page. So even if I insert another image below here, and we'll upload a new image for that. The problem is that it's considered a part of the gallery in general now. So we're just going to modify this bit of code, get rid of the automatic attribution. Actually, we're not going to keep that, but we're going to change what we're looking for, what we're selecting with our jQuery to be only links to images within the gallery class. So we're just going to modify select like so. And we'll save. You can see that doesn't have Lightbox, um, fancy box being loaded for it, but these ones are all within a Lightbox gallery. Before we finish up today, I'm just going to show you how to add a video lightbox. So we're going to get rid of what we have in lightbox.js and create a new function where we're going to target all links with a class of video. And now instead of what we normally do, we just close our fancy box here. We're going to add some arguments. First one is max width, which we're just going to set at 800. And max height, it's going to be at 600. Fit to view is being set at false. Width at 70%. Height also at 70%. Auto size false. Close click false. Open effect set it none and close effect set it none as well and close that off and don't forget to add on at the end and then if we go back to our site we're going to get rid of what we have here and we're going to open up a video and I've got one over here and it can be from YouTube, Vimeo, anywhere really that's providing you a embed code with an iframe and giving you the link in here. Because what we need once we've gone to our YouTube video and clicked embed and share, we want to grab that link that's the source of the iframe and copy that. In here, we want to make a link that links to that link. And we also want to give this link a class of video. Additionally, we also want to give it a class of 
fancy box dot iframe. You can have anything inside the link. I'm just going to have some text saying click here for a video update. And then we'll refresh here. And we click on the video, you can see the video open up in the light box and it's looking really nice, fitting quite well. So yeah, it's a really, it's a, a little bit more code for the video, but it's quite an easy thing to add. Um, in addition to that, there are quite a few things you can do with Fancybox. And you'll see below in the resources area, I've linked to um, a few different tutorials for it in terms of just adding little different things like customizing the style and appearance of it. But that's all we're going to do today and thank you for watching.